Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be a video about the potential for uh, the growing potential and basically very, very likelihood at this point for a large winter storm, a large blizzard. This thing is gonna be large not only because it's a snowstorm in December, again, it's just gonna be impactful, okay, but also it's supercharged on the warm air that has been occurring across the country. Today in my location, it got up to 60 degrees. It is the record for December 26th here. And uh, just ridiculous conditions have been occurring. Very warm, and it's basically the opposite of the polar, polar vortex. However, it's not going to stay long that way uh, at all. Maybe a couple more days of this warmth, then we see a big storm, and then we can see a giant pattern change coming through. Um, so, uh, before we get into this video, consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking this video, obviously go check out this channel, watch this whole video, but I do encourage that uh, you really do consider doing though. So, so uh, if you like this video, that also really helps this video get out to more people, and uh, it just really, really is useful, so if you're a consistent viewer and you like my channel, consider liking. Let's get into the video. So, we're right now looking at the GFS, basically right now, Eastern US is very calm, Basically nothing going on across the whole entire United States, except a little bit of uh, disruption and rain across the southwest. Notice across California, Las Vegas, La uh, Los Angeles, those cities, seeing a little bit of rain, uh, upper elevation, seeing some snow. This system is coming off the Pacific, really isn't that a moisture charge. It does have uh, quite a bit of potency with it, it is pretty powerful, but it's nothing compared to what it does once it gets out in the plains. You notice that, again, it, as soon as it breaks, through the mountains, you can see it takes uh, basically all of the rest of today, basically most of tomorrow to break through the mountains, and then it starts evolving into another system across the Rockies. So notice, or once it's through the Rockies, basically as soon as this thing is out of the uh, mountains and is out into the plains, any moisture that is uh, sitting around or the Gulf of Mexico, which is wide open for business, gets swooped up by this uh, low pressure as it is spinning low uh, uh, counterclockwise, like all low pressures do. And it just generates a giant flow of moisture. And of course, cold air being locked up here, being very stubborn. Cold air is very stubborn, and with this, even with this giant push of, uh, uh, you know, warmer air, this, you know, stays as snow across the north. So let's watch this happen and, uh, and what the models are showing. Notice, as we put this into time, we get that huge plume of moisture, very, very well developed. Uh, we see some very heavy rain, those yellow colors, some moderate to heavy rain, as well as, uh, again, that, that moderate to heavy snow with a little bit of icing. And that, again, is because that is to do with the cold air being so freaking stubborn that it does not want to move at all and when the warm air is just so powerful which at this point it is they those two clash the cold air sinks warm air rises on top of it and that creates a little bit of freezing rain or sleet and or sleet I should say that lasts for a little bit it usually you know turns over to rain if it's uh, consistently getting a push of moisture from this system and warm air from the south but the backside of it there's no warmer coming in there's just cold air coming in especially from this a uh, high pressure which is spinning clockwise and like all high pressures in the northern hemisphere, you can see it basically just delivers lots of cold air into this system, creating a very, very heavy snow and a very treacherous uh, travel conditions with the winds. I mean, the winds are going to be ridiculously uh, strong here. You can see those isobars are packed mainly to do with that high, high pressure there and a low pressure kind of juxtaposing each other very closely, which will obviously uh, not be good uh, for this uh, uh, for the f fair conditions, if you will. Notice uh, some very heavy snow across Nebraska. South Dakota really doesn't get the snow until the system kind of gets into a second wave, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Notice... Uh, Again, very heavy rain, very heavy uh, precipitation, loads of moisture with this, very well developed, strong winds, not much snow up here, but on the back side of it, it's just hollowing with heavy snow, and then look at it, it just really cranks out right here, this low pressure, and at this point, it's just, wherever this sets up, they will get lots of snow, and the point is, we don't know where that will set up exactly, but look at that, those isobars are insanely tightly packed, uh, northern Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota, seeing loads of snow out of this, definitely the snow would be falling heavily at this 
this point with lots of wind, so that's why blizzard conditions are probably blizzard warnings are gonna be issued. Notice, however, this system is so powerful, it looks as if it falls apart, but we see another giant surge of moisture from the south, which inevitably moves to the north, develops another low, and kind of a resurgence of heavy, heavy snow across uh, the uh, southern, ca um, kind of by Thunder Bay area of, of Canada, southern Canada, by uh, the other side of Lake Superior. And you could see UP of Michigan would be in for some heavy snow as well, and that delivers yet another punch of snow for the Wisconsin, Minnesota area, a little bit further to the east this time. Then this system really scoots off. We could be watching for a little bit of development across the east coast, but it doesn't seem like it will do too awful much of that. But uh, the snow print will be significant. If you look at the total snowfall from the GFS, you could see... Um, Lots and lots of snow. Uh, generally in the pink area, that's 6 inches and above. That green is 12 inches and above. You can see some areas are way above that green into that 2 feet plus region. Then generally across the Minnesota, Wisconsin area, 4 to 6 inches or 3 to 5. You may be wondering why am I looking at the GFS, not the European. Well, I will show you the European, except the GFS was the one that was indicating the storm from way earlier than what the European was showing. And it was it was the one that was, you know, at the end, the one that was right. The European was the wrong one, and it finally just adjusted to the GFS. So the GFS, in this case, was the winner, which doesn't happen too often, or at least we don't think it happens too often. But it, it, it fares fairly well, the GFS. Uh, better than many think. Notice the European puts out a lot of snow as well. If you were to look at the snowfall amounts, you could see just ridiculous amounts of snow. Across Wisconsin, not so much. South, uh, eastern Minnesota, St. Paul maybe getting 2-3 to three inches. Really nothing to go home about. However, as soon as you get into South Dakota, Central South Dakota, you get 15, 14, 12 inch amounts. And that's basically a definition of a crippling system. And some pockets of 21, 20 inches of snow. So, uh, yeah, this was this would be a significant storm and uh, people would have to take this with caution. Notice the mountains of Colorado not getting too much, 3 to 4 inches, 1 to 4, really the broader range. Across uh, Arizona, though, we could be seeing quite a bit of snow. You could see uh, a foot of snow that's uh, by the, or the mountains north of Phoenix. Quite a bit of snow could be falling out of that. Next 10 days in terms of European forecast, since several systems combined, you could see just more snow for these locations and uh, a little bit for the northeast, which could be interesting as well. So uh, this is just one model though there's the GFS is showing even more activity for the longer range the point being that we have a large large storm on, on our hands and let's go to the National Weather Service and let's see uh, what where the winter storm watches are and let me tell you there's a lot of them let's go to South Dakota uh, by Aberdeen Aberdeen South Dakota and you can see this is what they have right now heavy snow potential this weekend December 28th through 29th crippling system for um, Basically, no one at this point, but generally 16 inches or more of snow that's crippling, and I definitely think there will be some locations in that, as uh, it seems those many locations will be getting 16 uh, plus, or at least some will be enough to get to that crippling. I don't think it will be as broad as what this red area is in, but you can still see significant, generally 9 to 16, and yes, they have large, uh, I guess, uh, expectations for these people here. If this were happening in, you know, South Carolina, I mean, 1 to 4 inches would be a significant system, and 5 to 9 would just be crippling. But uh, this is different. They're more geared for this. There's less population here, so crippling system is 16 inches or more. Notice a large area is going to be seeing 9 to 16. And uh, okay, but again, the thing is heavy blowing snow, blowing snow, so it looks as if they will be issuing blizzard warnings for now. Uh, they just want to issue some winter storm watches not to cause pe people to panic. As they have described before, winter storm uh, watches are less likely people to panic than blizzard watches even though they still technically deliver a similar message. Notice, lots of warnings across north, north and central New Mexico. Uh, there are some winter storm warnings for some heavier snow. Uh, the winter weather advisories as well. Not as much, it seems, um, but though definitely some locations <laughs> seeing a 6 to 10, 3 to 5, uh, quite a bit as well. If we were to look at, say, the Arrowhead of Minnesota, here uh, we see significant amounts as well. So if we were to click on Eli, uh, Minnesota right there, it's in the Arrowhead. You can see it's a little bit going to be a little bit of a wintry mix at the uh, at the time where that storm is, just underneath uh, those locations, just to the south. That could be bringing a little bit of warmer air, kind of causing some mixing. But I would still say generally 6 to 10 at least. And the big question right here is Minnesota. I mean, Minneapolis could be, you know, they're they're showing that I'm ring right on the on the border between, you know, uh, medium, low, and uh, high. So 
again, it seems like this will be mainly a, a rainy event. However, again, some snow is definitely uh, going to be possible for those locations, especially after that snow uh, wraps up behind the system once the system passes to the east. Yeah, they don't know the exact, the exact track of the storm. That's why, uh, you know, they won't really know how much snow will fall, if any at all, at Minneapolis. Notice also this thing will be a giant rainmaker. If you look at the Lacrosse uh, forecast office of Wisconsin, you can see there's a good portion of southeastern Minnesota, north uh, eastern Iowa, and south really western Wisconsin. We see some hydraulic outlooks. That is basically uh, it's talking about the weekend rainfall to lead to a heavy, a heavy, uh, heavy potential for some river rises and some flooding. So if you were to look at this, uh, basically. Up to a tenth of inch of icing and uh, one inch of uh, snow, though uh, there is going to be quite a bit of rainfall. Again, one to two inches uh, at least. If you look at the Chicago office, not much snow out of this one, guys, but a lot of rain, uh, again, out of this one. So we haven't been seeing much rain, so uh, I can't say it's going to be a good thing as nothing's really growing. Farmers aren't growing anything right now, but uh, it's, you know, it's nice to keep a balance in the soil. And uh, you can see... Likely Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday chance, Sunday night. We could get a little bit of mixing on Monday. So that is that. And uh, let's go to North Platte, uh, Nebraska, and check out some of these locations. You can see uh, these. Th this office has even bigger challenges. A sharp cutoff may be occurring, uh, r you know, right across these locations. They're showing 8 to 12 in this county and a couple of counties over it could be, you know, basically that's less than 1 inch. But generally 8 to 12 inch of inch, North Platte 6 to 8, Valentine or Valentine uh, 8 to 12, and Rushville 8 to 12 as well. So a good dose of snow for these locations as well. And again, I've been tracking the storm for quite a while uh, before the even National Weather Service was talking about it. So just wanted to say that this isn't like a panic uh, you know, type of situation. This is just updating and informing you on the storm. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to the channel. We'll catch you all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.